A all gravity, any day above ground, live it. Sorry, my bad. Um, I need to get right with the most high. I really did. This broadcast, I'm not being hyperbolic. I, this might be one of the most important broadcasts you ever hear off of this channel. I know a lot of people like to say that us, the woke, when we talk about the police, it's like we don't want to take accountability for our actions when we say the cops are doing too much. They, they, they think we're crazy when we say, listen, this same police that you love watching and cheering on, whooping our ass out here, setting us up, taking us out because we didn't comply. They're going to turn on you. And when that happens, don't come back to us. I promise you, we're not going to hear your cries. We're going to be like, you know what? You should have complied. Oh, you Nick Nogs, y'all don't know what you're talking about. The cops are our friend. Okay, dickheads, let me, let me talk to you. The job of the police is to serve the public trust and uphold the public trust and protect businesses. They were never for the individual citizen. We told you this years ago. I told you this years ago. I even showed you the definition of it. You didn't want to listen. Okay. It's funny how, you know, the woke say things that you disregard and then like clockwork, it always comes back around and shows that we were right. Family, I got three, three recent cases three that are going to show you that y'all qualified immunity y'all see the poll that i put up pause something's got to be done i don't know what it is or how it's going to look but qualified immunity got to go because especially when we get to dexter reed and that's the reason why i'm late because i was reviewing a lot of the stuff that came out about that. I don't even know how the hell I'm going to report that part of it. The cops are not America's friend. They're not. I, I don't care if YouTube don't like the fact that I said that. I don't care if channels like Police Activity don't like the fact that I said that. The cops are not our friend. And this is why we fight so hard for reparations. One of the tenets of this, if you are of the soil or you are a writer and you understand what reparations is and what it has to look like, one of those things we got to do with that money is protect our own. Buy your, buy your pieces, buy your security, hell, higher security if you got enough money, repel borders, something because the, the, these cops out here they're getting worse I'm sorry I gotta say it they're getting worse and these three examples I, I hope illustrate that but I done ran it enough let me see who's in the building and who gonna yell at me for being late I'm black leave me alone Jerry Bedford good morning Brother Torian good morning Miss Nisi good morning Tater Man good morning the slanderous truth. Good morning. Wallow J, good morning. DJ, good morning. Soul Survivor, good morning. Keanu G, good morning. Mm. Hey, hey, Keanu G, if you're still here, ain't you in Chicago? Yeah. Um, my bad on the third one. I'm just gonna warn y'all now. The third one is hella disturbing. David Brown, hello. Karen Dorsey, hello. Black Manta, 777, hello. Mr. Fats Arafat, hello. You seem new, but welcome. Computer Robots, hello. <sighs> Reparations Nation, good morning. You said it needs to be banned at a state level. Most of us will never have a run-in with the feds. Most, if not all our issues that sound good are with local pigs, not the feds. Come on, y'all. All right.
Leonard Yuta, good morning. We're going to play that one, too. Yeah, I, I apologize. Okay, so you are in Chicago. I apologize in advance. Travis Daniels, hello. John Guillory, good morning. For those who haven't said anything in the live chat or the comment section, good morning. Okay. Well, OJ, we're going to start with the with the white man. Since they need to... Since they need to understand that the chickens are coming home to roost because you got YouTubers and others running around saying that this is cool. <sighs> so unfortunately, I'm going to have to use old punk ass Dom Luke Cray's video. So I had to unmute his ass. But we're going to start there. You know, let me go here. There's a, <laughs> there, there's a growing concern. In okay. So this was Donald McAdam back in 2022. Got arrested, was in the car. They said that he was spitting at the cops. Okay. Fine. Whatever. The one cop, Justin Chappell, proceeded to do this. No sound. Fair use. There you go. So you saw it. Yeah. Ten times. Some people said it was 13. Depends on which video you saw. All right, you go back to being muted. Asshole. Wait, I unmuted it. You go back to being muted. Asshole. Anyway, there you go. This is another thing we're going to teach today. I want y'all to watch comments on some of these things that I'll show you. Ashley Sinclair. Now, we cooked her the other day. Still didn't finish fixing fitness with the E. But okay. That ain't what this is about. Look, then he shouldn't have been resisting. When these thugs start listening, they will have less incidents like this. So easy to prevent. Even seeing police misconduct, they still say the cops were right. Okay. Tori, and that I'm on chapter five of that book, boy. Woo. Mm. Somebody asked, what exactly is he resisting? She said, this is the consequence of resisting, not the resisting. I want y'all to keep a pen in that. I want y'all to keep a pen in that. So Sailor came back to her and said, so the badass cop couldn't fight the guy one-on-one, -on -one, but once handcuffed, he was suddenly man enough to punch him repeatedly in the head. I don't give a F if he resisted or not. Once the hand, once handcuffed, it's over. You must be a Democrat. <laughs> Woo! They calling you a Democrat. All right. If you only knew about this, well, you know what? We're going to be nice today. We're not going to call people out their names. I'm not going to call people out their names. This was the one I needed y'all to see. Mm. No, was it this one? No. I think it was this one.
Every police officer has his limits. <laughs> At least you have some sensible people in here saying that he was doing too much. Here we go. Have to see the entire video. How do we know this young scholar wasn't manipulating his man parts? What? Huh? Oh, Jesus. The entire video would be nice, but police officers are human beings too in the way they have been treated lately. I do not condone this, but every man has a breaking point. Who treated them as what? Huh? Can we just label cops as citizens now and just, you know, so, so maybe that's what it's going to take for them to f see accountability, I guess. Ooh, God. Uh, true professionals of the trade have self-control. Not in this case, though. To get jumped into a game back in the day, you had to last 13 seconds. Don't ask me how I know that. Most of the guys doing it got more than 10 years, but for completely different stuff. What? There's something suspicious about the 13 times. Why wasn't it why wasn't it 12 or 14? Was it because of leap year? These are a few questions I bet will never be answered. Okay. It was wrong, but learning lessons is essential. I'd expect this in Brockton, not way mouth shaking my head. Okay. No, and the black back to blue people need to explain how I can support this. Don't call 911 when you're getting robbed. So as you can see, we still got people defending the cops, even though they're whooping on your own citizen, your own people. They get whooped on, but that's okay. I could only imagine what the comments would have been if he was black. Wait a minute. We can go find out. Enough about the white boy. Let's move on to Mr. Calvin Riley. You know, Let me go here. There is a, there, there's a growing concern. In I'm sure y'all probably started hearing this story bandied about, but if you didn't, I just want y'all to listen to this interaction down in Florida, because of course Florida got a Florida. But I want y'all to listen to what happened with Mr. Calvin Riley, and then we're going to look at the story. Fair use. We're going to speed it up a little bit. Fair use. Meet Calvin Riley. He's being stopped by the Tallahassee Police Department on South Monroe. Hello, sir. I'm Officer Aldo Tallahassee Police Department. She'll point out evidence of an empty liquor bottle in Riley's car before arresting him for an alleged DUI. Riley's license is suspended, and officers decide to arrest Riley on a first offense for his suspended Would license. Would you be willing to do some voluntary field sobriety exercises? Okay. Here, go ahead and step out of the vehicle for us. They didn't tell him the consequences of refusing that voluntary test. After detaining Riley, they ask him if he smoked any marijuana. Mr. Riley, I got a quick, quick no, question no, for no you. Um, so I smelled marijuana in your vehicle. Did no, you no, recently no, smell? No, 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 no. Once he's arrested for driving with a suspended license, they can search his car. Officer Oliver leaves the car, does a 360, and then goes back in the car, retrieving a sealed liquor bottle and pours it out. That was the sound of the seal on the liquor bottle breaking. By the way, on the body cam, they saw her plant that in that man's car. You heard what the what homeboy just said. It was still sealed. Here's another angle. While Officer Muth questions Riley about marijuana again. Did somebody else is smoking your car earlier? Oliver tosses the empty bottle into the passenger seat. They don't find any marijuana in the car. Here You're probably asking yourself, why did they ask him if he was smoking marijuana? She claims that she heard him 
<laughs> they smelled it. They kept asking him, do you have a marijuana card? He told them, I don't smoke. Yeah. Here's Officer Oliver implying to Officer Mooth that the empty bottle was likely what was in a cup in Rabbi Center Concert. Cover where, like, the knee would sit. There's an opening, and he had it, like, uh, cut. Okay. And then the, the water we had in his cup also then Officer Muth tells a senior officer that they found open alcohol in the car, in both a bottle and a cup. Well, okay, so you had a bunch of alcohol stash in there, but... Nothing open in it? Yeah, open. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, in his, like, service in the center console, he had a mix to drink, and then under his knee, he had, um, a, like, little bottle of vodka tucked away. When officers group to discuss the case, they all ask each other if their body cameras are off. Any evidence of that? No, Yeah. Did you hear that? We're playing it again. Yeah, that was kind of low. Y'all got to really listen. Listen. I mixed the drink, and then under his knee, he had um, a like, little bottle of vodka tucked away. Where when officers group to discuss the case, they all ask each other if their body cameras are off. Still alive. Any evidence of that? No. Yeah. Okay. Please. They asked them if their body cams were off. I thought you're supposed to keep it on. Hmm. Mm -hmm. The video ends at this point. Riley's arrest report states, quote, a search of Riley's vehicle. A search of Riley's vehicle yielded a small, approximately five fluid ounces bottle of vodka that was opened in a pocket on the driver's seat cover. Located in the center console of the vehicle, I observed there was a cup that smelled of an alcohol beverage. Well, yielded a small bottle of vodka that was opened in a pocket in the driver's seat cover. Riley's case begins on Friday, April 5th, in the Leon County Courthouse in Tallahassee. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Video shows Tallahassee police officer planning evidence during DUI arrests. Found the brother guilty of DUI. Was he cursing during this period of time? I don't remember. His left blinker was on, is that correct? I don't remember. Which was the registration for his car, correct? I don't remember. Because the car had automatic lights. I don't remember if it had an auto setting. It was a strong odor. It wasn't strong, but I couldn't remember smelling it. Vehicle. I don't remember if she searched the vehicle. So you don't remember her searching on the passenger side while you search on the driver's side? No, I don't remember that. You told Officer Move that the bottle was open? I don't remember my exact um, phrasing. You can just show me Objection where it's recording. improper impeachment. Do you not remember? I don't remember the exact place. You told Officer Move that the bottle was open? I don't remember my exact um, phrasing. I don't remember what my thought process was behind the statement. I don't remember the conversation. So you don't remember discussing indicators impairment that you saw in Mr. Riley? I don't remember discussing that, no. Did Officer Muth or Sergeant Smith ever convey to you that their body <laughs> was on after you had turned those off? I don't remember that I don't remember. Yeah, just, have you previously testified that the protocol is to dump out open containers? Uh, I, I don't remember. Let's just get her. Let's just make a thumbnail for this chick. I don't remember. You don't know a lot, do you? And you a cop. You don't know a lot. All right. No, We're just going to get to, I think it was. Now, this was his second day trial. This is where they found him guilty of DWI. I don't even understand that. If you, if y'all are interested in that, I'll put it in the chat.
Karen Dorsey said, do she know her name? She don't remember. This is their out. This happened a year ago. All right, family, you know what I'm about to say. Um, Y'all get paid. I think the first thing y'all should buy after you pay your bills off, go buy a, a dashboard cam. Yeah, go get that. They have them ones now that they do dual. They do inside and out. Go get that. I know it's a couple hundred bucks. And I know some of y'all may be not able to get it. Amazon, they, you could put it on a uh, payment plan. Get that. Pounded for a period of 10 days. If you no longer own a vehicle, you can anything, but I've so, gone through this entire process. We perpetuated testimony of a pregnant officer with additional facts on the labor pains that we perpetuated. My concern at this point is we've gone through this entire process. We perpetuated testimony of a pregnant officer who is actively having labor pains. And then additionally, we've also <coughs> come to trial with additional facts and evidence that were not discovered a month ago when that plea offer was made. So Amazing Lucas, you you hit your, the nail on the head. So to help make your case, you brought up the fact that one of the officers now is pregnant. I hope y'all understood what you heard just now. To make her conviction stick, she is appealing to the judge that one of the officers that they cross-examined, one who testified is pregnant. And we put and they put her under immense stress. That's basically what she's saying. So given the facts and the evidence of this case, he's not willing to accept responsibility for his actions and the consequences that they the only thing he was wrong of doing was having a suspended license and a goddamn taillight being out. Understand, family, I know I didn't tell you this part. That's why they really pulled him over. They pulled him over because one of his taillights were out. Not I'm not excusing the suspended license. I don't excuse Ryan Dirty. But that's why. And turned into this. And that's why the state is basing our request for this specific sentence. Mr. Riley, please rise. Do you have anything that you wish to say before I pass sentence? I accept the responsibility for getting upset. And that's my emotion to get over my judgment of just being a person and staying calm. Like I stated before, I was only going through this emotional stuff because the past I've been through with law enforcement and what I started going through that night with these officers. It was just a repeat of what I experienced going up here. And it made me very upset and angry. And if anyone was hurt in that moment, I apologize, but at the same time, I was hurt too. And I'm still dealing with it. And that police that the state is talking about, I was unaware of that until like they came on board. I have a new lawyer. I, all this stuff was brought to my attention sweat last month. And things start changing. So I, don't, I don't have time to process all this stuff, neither. 
I don't know what else to say. Okay. Thank you. You don't. You didn't have to say anything, but I appreciate you speaking. All right, I'm going to no, adjudicate you guilty as I did before, sentence you to six months probation. Cool. As a condition of that probation, you'll do 10 days in the Leon County Jail. You'll also have to attend and complete DUI level one school and any counseling as re uh, recommended. 50 hours of community service. Your vehicle, if you drunk. own one, will be impounded for a period of 10 days. If you no longer own a vehicle, you just need to get a certification from the DHSMV saying that you no longer own the vehicle and that can be waived. He loses his car. Your driver's license will be suspended for a period of six months. You'll need to attend and complete a victim awareness program. You will have alcohol program. conditions with random breath test once per month. What the fuck? And your probation can terminate early at the halfway point if you have completed all of your conditions. And Madam Clerk, if you could please announce the standard fines and court costs and would the defense like them to be itemized? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, if you could please break them down for us. So, 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 so he got a set in jail for 10 days. He gets, he gets evidence planted on him. He got to sit down for 10 days. So he got to be away from his old lady, his daughter, lose his car, no license for six months because they, they, they planted evidence on him. Tatum man, he had nothing in his car. Okay, maybe I forgot. I didn't tell you how this part. You know what his blood alcohol was? Yeah, 0, 0.00. That bottle that you saw on the body cam, that was closed. You heard in the in the testimony, she found it in the center console. Okay. I'm not mad at you, Tatum, man. I'm not. It wasn't open. It was still sealed. He has to sit down for 10 days. Karen Dorsey, thank you for being coming a member. As you know, it is 99 cents. Sorry. As you know, it's 99 cents. Helps me reinvest back, back in the platform and buy toys for the baby. That's a blessing. Here's the thing, though, Bunker, even if he did, the officers even testified that they didn't, even though they say he was drunk, he they didn't get him for swerving. I saw that VMOS being, thank you, thank you, thank you. You get this, too. And D Humphrey, thank you for becoming a member as well. Members, 99 cents helps me reinvest back in the platform, buy toys for the baby. I think there was a GoFundMe. I think there was a GoFundMe. Let me go look for that rig. I think there was a GoFundMe. Yeah, there is. I plan on donating Friday. So um, 
All you back to blue assholes. So you saw, let's see, we see a handcuffed suspect get punched in the face 13 times, but y'all were cool with that. Now we have a black man. You know what? Y'all get pissed. Y'all get pissed when we mention color. Okay. Let's start over. Now we got ourselves a handcuffed suspect. It got punched in the face 13 times. Y'all cool with that. Now we have a man who had evidence planted on him in his car. Get 10 days in jail plus all these probation. All these probation requirements to complete. He basically got railroaded in court. And y'all cool with that? Because I don't see y'all outside saying Calvin Riley needs justice. I don't see this. But there y'all go, family. I put the GoFundMe for Calvin Riley in there. I'm going to donate on Friday. Because this is bullshit. He should not be away from his baby. Not near day. That he can't control. So that's his story. But we're going to have to stay in Florida, family. We're going to have to stay in Florida, unfortunately. Because something came out that, of course, they're not going to acknowledge. Did y'all know they uh, deleted another black man? But this time, as they deleted said black man, he was having a mental episode. And they were sitting there saying that, oh, he was dangerous. He was dangerous. Hmm. On his porch, feet away from you. Feet from you. Yeah, he's dangerous. Got to protect ourselves. Interesting. Interesting. Let's review this case. You know, Let me go here. There is a, <laughs> there, there's a growing concern. In Y'all see that? Don't kill my child. Mom speaks after Miami police tased and shot son in Model City. Police responded to a home in Model City after a mother called 911 to report her son was high on drugs. Doesn't this sound familiar? Let's see what the mom said. Fair use. Forced to fire while responding to a call. That shooting and interaction Forced to fire. captured by several bystanders. Good evening. Thank you for joining us tonight. I'm Juwan Strader. And I'm Roxanne Vargas. Nico Clemens spoke to that man's mother and has her reaction. He joins us live from Jackson Memorial tonight. Nico. You too. And she was right there with her son when he was shot. In fact, in that video, you see she's trying to get him to drop what he's holding and listen to police, but he does the opposite. She says she was trying to get her son some help. I told him he didn't have no gun or anything. She says she was trying to protect her son. Denise Armstrong, who you see on the porch in the white shirt, says she was trying to talk with her son, Donald, who you see in the red pants. In front of them were several Miami police officers. She said she called 911 because her son was high on drugs and she didn't want anyone to hurt him. We spoke with her Thursday night. She didn't want to show her face on camera. Don't kill my child. Don't kill my child. That's all I can tell him. Police say when they showed up to the home on Northwest 7th Court and 57th Street, the man was holding a sharp object, erratic, and not listening to their commands. Here he is waving that sharp object. His family says he was holding a screwdriver. He then yells at police to shoot him in the heart. 
He lifts up his shirt and police say they tased him. Police say it had no effect. He then rips the prongs out of his body. Police tase him again, and it appears he starts swinging towards officers. Seconds later, Police say at least one of their officers made the decision to shoot several times. We paused the video as he fell to the ground. His mother was inside the house, feet away. They didn't have to shoot uh, him like that. Oh, yep. oh, news. Hey, hey, ain't that a beautiful thing, news? You 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 play this part, but you stop it when, before he hits the ground? Y'all are so considerate. The video as he fell to the ground. His mother was inside the house, feet away. They didn't have to shoot him like that. They already chased him already. Several people witnessed the shooting and recorded video, including Preston Baldwin. I just hear shooting, I smell gunpowder, and I see the guy fall off his porch. Armstrong is now praying her son pulls through. I'm trying to hold on. I'm sick myself. When we spoke with Armstrong tonight, she said her son was in surgery, but they do expect him to pull through. FDLE is investigating. Nico Clemens, NBC6 News. All right. So there was that. Don't you play this motherfucker. Damn, I play it. Shit. All right, we do this. Okay. So while OJ, you asked what a model city was, is basically... You ever watch RoboCop? You know uh, how they were trying to build Delta City? It's basically that. It's a brand new city within a city. You put resources into a bad area, build it up. It was a federal program, but they stopped it less than, it was only in operation, I think, for less than a decade. So I guess they just kept the name Model City. <clears throat> And for those who need to know, yes, Ben Crump is on the case. Mm. So he has a full video. I ain't finna show it because I don't want to see. I see. I saw it already. I don't want to see this. So this account comes in talking about some. He was swinging a knife at cops. What do you think was going to happen? Swinging knife at cops. Okay. Good. We all saw the same thing. Them cops had a corridor ready. But okay. Somebody said they were not for one minute in danger. Then he said, okay, easy to say from your home. Enjoy that privilege. Look at the video. If you can't see reality, you're MAGA and shouldn't be anywhere near my mentions. Please don't become another trigger happy police. Here we go. I'm a retired cop with a law degree, 3,000 arrests, zero shootings, not trigger happy, just honest, educated, and experienced in this realm. You. Zero shootings, good for you. I get why you're defensive and don't want the public to jump to conclusions. However, I once believed the story you were the good guys until I saw video after video evidence to the contrary. You see it too. Something changed when you went military. Yeah, the thing is, it's important to remember that annually there was 200 million citizen police contacts, 10 million arrests, 10 thousand uh, sorry thousand deadly police shootings just because you saw a few videos does not change the fact that 99.99 percent of police interactions are fine look he's gonna play per capita now they tased him twice why shoot him too doesn't make any sense taser didn't work and he went at him with a knife he fell off the porch i didn't realize that was getting after the cops and then realizing. Look, look at the lie he tells. And his response was to take steps and swing knife. He fell off the damn porch. Then he tried to get up and that's when he shot him. That's when y'all shot him seven times. Y'all could have surrounded him. Family, they could have, after he fell, they could have surrounded him, jumped on him like they like to do. Take the knife, put him under arrest.
Paul Grant, hello, you seem new. You're welcome. It's time we sh we should start our own support systems in cases like this to take care of black people by black people. Well, I suggested something like that before. It's called neighborhood watches. They take care of their own. You hire black lawyers, black social workers. You let them hopefully de-escalate the situation. If you can't, you call up the black lawyer and you get the black lawyer to be the representative of the suspect or suspects and you have him take them into custody. But, you know. <sighs> Cynical mandate. Hello, you seem new as well, but welcome. That military to police pipeline? Yeah, well. They don't want to mention that. It's always prison, school to prison. Yeah. Complexion for the protection, Shamika. Complexion for the protection. <sighs> well, in this situation, Buck, are we going to make time? His video, he wasn't near any of them with that knife. Okay, well, watch the video. Laugh out loud. It's weird to lie about facts. Now, mind you, again, this dude's former cop. So, of course, he's going to defend him. I watched the video numerous times. You have to be an uber-biased turd to say any officer was in danger at all at any point in time of the video. There you go again. Easy for you to save from the comfort of your home. Enjoy that privilege. You mean the police privilege? Uh-huh. Meanwhile, your home licking boots via Twitter. Stevie Wonder can see those cops weren't in danger. I'm a retired cop with a law degree. You are an anonymous troll. We are not the same. From now on, I'll give you the attention you deserve. Block per SOP. Ooh. Where's the knife, you racist troll? Keep a pen in that as well. Interesting. So you can exp so can you explain why a white person was charging police with a knife and they never shot him, took him into custody alive and well? I just wonder what you think about that. Complexion for the protection. Looks like the taser was working and he was swinging his knife because of that. People don't, police don't have a baton anymore. Pretty sure they do. Seven cops can't take down one man with a knife without shooting nine times. No. Four versus one guy. If the, those cops are that scared, they need another job. They are a bunch of cowards. That's not a knife. In this video, he was not swinging a knife at the cops. They were not near him. It was reported he possessed no knife during this video. Where are you getting that false statement from? Well, we've seen them mistake screwdrivers and pieces of metal for knives. Just like they used to mistake a wallet for a gun. Or a cell phone for a gun. He was falling when they shot him. Man, what the F are you seeing? You're one of them. Don't think you'd see other people's views. When he got taser, he was falling and they shot him falling. The F out of here. Bruh, I know you passed, but come on, let, let, let's spell. Shoot him in the kneecap. That's actually illegal, but, you know. Oh, somebody pulled a receipt on him. Now, I didn't see this. What the hell? Oh, don't tell me you went out. Uh, right, you must be dead. Okay. And this one's dead, too? Can't be. Oh shit. Okay. Um, give me one second. Uh, give me one second.
Okay, so both my mouse died. All right. Ain't that something? Never seen that before. But okay. All right. Let's get back to this. Let's get back to this. Yep. Did that in Florida too, Bunker. You're right. 100 people in the room hit the like. Yes, they did that too. Black Lightning X, hello. Okay, there's that. But let, let me see this person pull his whole card. Ashley Babbage, she should not have rioted, trespassed, and caused property damage on 1-6. But, here comes the but, she was unarmed and posed no imminent deadly threat to anyone. Lord have mercy. <laughs> No use of force expert can articulate that deadly force was reasonable in this incident. Wait a minute. 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 The imminent deadly threat. Wait a minute. Let's play the game. How you know she didn't have a weapon? What's that term they like to use a lot of times? Exigent circumstances? Michael Bird had to do what he had to do. He had people to protect, right? That's what y'all love to tell us. It's funny that this former cop does not want to use his own standard when the person in question that gets gunned down is white nobody want to say nothing cordell lewis they ignored that they've been ignoring it and this was one of their favorite presidents fbi that said this they ignore it white supremacy has been joining they didn't give a damn because it didn't affect them. Now it's affecting them. And I want y'all to think about this too. You know what pisses them off so much about George Floyd? It ain't the fact that they consistently say he had the fentanyl and that's what killed him. Not, not the knee. That ain't it. It ain't the fact that he was a criminal. That ain't it. It's the fact that they all consistently hid the fact that Tony Tempa died the same way he did. And mentioning that case would expose their hypocrisy. And for those who don't know who Tony Tempa is, he went through damn near the same thing George Floyd did. He had cocaine in his system. He was having a mental episode. They put their knee on his neck. This happened in Texas. God bless Texas. Killed him. Yes, they did. Do you know his people just got a settlement? Seven years later, just got their settlement. Million dollars. But they got pissed that George Floyd people, I think he got 27. They got pissed at that. Hmm. Interesting. Oh, by the way, none of them cops in Tony Tempest's case got convicted. Not near one, but they pissed as Chauvin sitting in jail with 22 extra airways. Oh, we could go over Tony Tempest real fast before we get to Dexter Reed. And by the way, for those who are of the business mind, guess what happened? What they announced today. Besides that vote that I'm going to, I told y'all about the other day. Yeah, inflation is up. By now he's talking about he going he going forgive student loans in September, but inflation surged in March. 
surged. Mm. Mm. But okay, we'll we'll go look at Tony Tempa real fast because. I need I'm y'all don't understand. I'm really trying to avoid doing Dexter Reed. I'm I want to report it, but them details are gonna piss y'all off. And I don't care if it's behind an age wall, I'm finna I'm finna show it to a certain point. Federal judge awards $1 million to Tony Tempest's son, finds three Dallas police officers liable for his death. Liable. Civilly. No charges. Federal judge found three Dallas police officers liable for the 2016 death of Tony Tempest. Wednesday awarded $1 million to his 15-year-old son, far less than $300 million his family's lawyers pushed for in the trial. Notice white people didn't say nothing about this. And I figured they wouldn't. This just shows you that they have no allegiances. Tempa, a 32-year-old trucking executive from Rockwall, died on August 10, 2016, during arrest after calling 911 for help. His family filed a wrongful death suit alleging Dallas police officer Dustin Dillard violated Tempest's Fourth Amendment rights by using excessive force that led to his death. And officers Raymond Dominguez, Danny Vasquez, and Sergeant Kevin Mansell failed to intervene. Failed to intervene. Doesn't that sound familiar? The jury found all but Mansell liable Wednesday. In closing arguments Tuesday afternoon, attorney for the Tempa, Tempa's Jeff Henley occurred. Oh, that, oh Jesus. He, that's why it fucked me up. He had no comment here. Okay. In closing arguments Tuesday afternoon, attorney for the Tempa's Jeff Henley encouraged the jury to give Tempa's estate more than $100 million. His parents, $40,911,911 each, and Tempa's son, $120,911,911. Thousand nine hundred eleven. The jury ultimately landed on a one million dollar figure for Justice Son. Attorneys with the City of Dallas argued Tempest's history of substance abuse, mental illness, and heart conditions ultimately led to his death. Doesn't that sound familiar? Huh. Okay. She asked jurors to consider evidence alone in their verdict as the jury charge asked. Quote, this isn't about symbolism or the Dallas Police Department. Go in said. This is about whether these men will be called killers. Sorry, I missed this paragraph. When she said the defense evidence showed officers had followed all protocol for handling him, but did not cause his death. Doesn't that sound familiar? It took three years for the Dallas Police Department to publicly release body cam footage from the incident. Grand jury indicted Mansell, Vasquez, and Dillard in 2017 for misdemeanor deadly conduct in Tempest's death. But Dallas County District Attorney John Cruzat later dismissed those charges. Of course he did. Of course he did. U.S. District Judge David C. Godbey dismissed the Tempest family's excessive force lawsuit in 2020 because of qualified immunity. Of course they did. Of course they did. But the U.S. Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals reversed that decision, allowing the suit to move forward, and the trial began September 18th. It was originally set for July, but Gabi delayed it due to his concerns about media attention influencing the trial. That's how he died. Right here. When Tempa rolled over and tried to sit upright, the officers rolled Tempa onto his stomach and Dillard and Vasquez held him down. Dillard using his knee while Tempa groaned and repeatedly yelled, help me. After 11 minutes of Dillard kneeling, Tempa stopped moving, but Dillard still kneed on Tempa for about three more minutes, 14 minutes in total. 
He and the other officers can be heard asking Tempa if he was okay. Then Dominguez and Vasquez jokingly pretending to be a mom trying to wake a kid up for school, and the officers can be heard laughing. Mansell, who was first on the scene, was away from the group talking to Tempa's stepmother on the phone. Laughing. 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 The officers then lifted Tempo on a gurney to get him inside an ambulance. Quote, I hope I didn't kill him. Dillard can be heard saying Dominguez and Vasquez joke that it wasn't a we issue. So even during a traffic stop and someone having a mental episode, you delete someone, you still managed to do this. Who is we? Who is we? You got to love them. Then paramedics and the ambulance told the officers Tempo was gone. And the officers performed CPR but failed to resuscitate him. Seven years ago, Tony Tempo made that phone call. And over the last seven days, we've been imploring you to answer it. Henley told jurors on Tuesday. Dallas County Medical Examiner Dr. Emily Ogden ruled Tony Tempest's death a homicide according to the lawsuit, specifically sudden cardiac death caused by toxic effects of cocaine and psych physiological stress and physical restraint. Hmm. Look at this. Deadly force or deadly health problems. Doesn't that sound familiar? Determining whether the officers caused Tempest's death hinged on extensive testimony from both sides, medical and law enforcement experts. The news reported Dr. Mar Martin Tobin, a pulmonologist who testified in the trial of Derek Chauvin over George Floyd's mur murder, was a key witness for the plaintiffs. plaintiffs sorry. He told the Dallas jury he determined the force of the officer's hands and Dillard's knee on Tempest's back deprived him of oxygen, which Tobin referred to as compressive asphyxiation. Law enforcement expert Michael D. Lyman testified Tuesday Dillard's use of force was improper, unnecessary, and unreasonable. He said in his research and experience, prone restraint violates various policing standards, and the other three officers reasonably could have intervened. The jury also heard from defense witness Dr. Jeffrey Barnard, chief medical examiner for Dallas County. He was not involved in Tempa's autopsy, but said he and Ogden work on the same team. Tempa had 0.647 milligrams per liter of cocaine in his body, according to an autopsy report from three days after his death. That's a significant amount of cocaine, Barnard said. He told jurors Tempa had an enlarged heart, which could be attributed to pre-existing heart conditions, cocaine use, or both. He also said pictures of Tempa's body showed signs of decomp decomposition rather than asphyxia. Doesn't that sound familiar? Barnard said Tempa's family didn't tell Tempa didn't tell him Tempa had dealt with issues like elevated blood pressure and heart palpitations, as medical reports showed, nor that he had a history of substance abuse and had been in rehab at least four times. He agreed with Gowen that such information is helpful for a post-mortem post assessment. Senior Corporal Sam Hassan, who trains Dallas police officers on use of force and crisis intervention, explained to jurors the department's use of force continuum that's used in training. Given the circumstances, he said Tempa was in a crisis and posed a threat. Therefore, Dillard keeping his knee on Tempa's back to control him was reasonable. The officers don't really have any good options, Hanson said. There were no good options in this scenario. Yeah. All right. So you got some history on that. Now we get to this. God, I don't want to play this, but Jesus. <sighs> I guess I should just go back to the beginning. Let me see if I still have the tweet. Oh, I forgot this one, too. There was another one I wanted to show you. Damn, I didn't save it. Okay. The reason why I'm discussing Dexter Reed is because I saw a tweet the other day 
that somebody on the ground in Chicago said that body cam footage was about to go out of a bad shooting and the city might be on it, it could tear the city apart so I did my research and it, family is bad like it's it's bad Bad, bad. But before we get to that, I want to show y'all this. This is this is for them high IQ folk that, that love to tell us that we need to comply. Okay, gotcha. You know, let me go here. There is a, <laughs> there, there's a growing concern. In now we'll go up to the point where they delete this person. But after we show you this video, I'm going to show y'all the comments and I want y'all to I want y'all to tell me in the chat what you're going to see in the chat of this video in the in the thread. I want y'all to tell me what you see as I read those comments, but let's get to this. Fair use. He's trying to hit me. I... He's trying to hit me. Okay, he's trying to hit me. Hey, sir. No, sir. Don't come in, don't come in, boss. Wait, wait. Don't, don't go. Now, mind you, he has an AR-15 in his hand. That's when they took him down. We're not finna show that. He reloaded. You saw that. He reloaded, so he emptied off the whole clip. He had an AR. He had an AR. Didn't even mind you, family. He didn't even point it at him. Didn't even point it at him. Coming out in twenty-three nine nine eight. I got one male subject down. He has an AR fifteen. Didn't point it at you though. Okay. All he said was, don't come near me. I am old enough to remember when police would give a verbal command to drop the weapon before mag dumping you. Those days are long gone now. It's shoe first to figure out how to justify it later. If you happen to survive, they will run you up with felony charges. You can set up in jail for a few years, set in jail for a few years, or plead out and pay whatever. That's how they hide. This is flat out deleting a man in his own home, full stop. True, and nothing will happen to this officer. It'll be passed off as justified. Heck, he might even get a medal. That's basically like a... Like if a cop was driving around and saw a guy opening, carrying, stops, jumps out and shoots him. Same damn thing. Worse because the guy is in his own home. Now, we done read three comments. What do you think I'm about to say now? I'll even take the first one out. The last two comments I just read. What case does that remind you of? Cop just committed the N word. Have to wait and see what the court says. They will call it a justified shooting. They killed the guy who was clearly on their side. The wife killed him via coward cop. And that adds another element to why this is so bad. The omen have a hard enough. The, what? The woman. Oh, that's what you meant? The woman? Okay. You need to learn how to spell. The woman. The women have a hard enough time calling the cops because she feels bad. He'll go to jail. But getting shot just for standing in the dining room with a gun. Fuck, this is bad. It's funny. We told you all this. Not both of them, John. You're close, though. Not him. 
Tamir Rice. Nope. Once again, clue deleted in their home. Call the cops if you want to delete your husband. They'll do it for you. That's deletion period. It's not even a discussion. Law enforcement are not your friends. They are not here for your safety. They are not here to protect. They are not here to serve. Nothing will happen to them. They will get away with deleting this man in his own home. This is America. Accept it. Wake up. Thank you, Maxwell Jenkins. Thank you, Brianna Taylor. I would even accept ex, bleh, I would have even accepted a Tatiana Jefferson. Shout out to Wild J. He got it too. So you're not even safe in your own home anymore. Remember that, family. Remember I showed y'all a few months ago of them arresting that dude in Arkansas for giving his son a piercing. They ran up in his house. Somebody said, here's the full video for effing context. A kid of the parents called about them keeping him up at night and stated he didn't think they were, he didn't think there were any weapons and the argument was verbal. The wife presumably opened the door saying he's trying to hit me and it goes really, really poorly. I'm gonna need donut operator on this shit show. I've muted this. Don't expect a response. Unfreaking believable. Since when are the police able to simply stroll inside someone's home, castle doctrine anyone, and execute someone like this? From what little could be determined from the brief video, it did not appear the man was threatening anyone. Obviously, we didn't see what led up to the police being called in the first place, but the officer didn't even give him the opportunity to put the weapon down. He simply turned the corner, saw the man standing there, and commenced firing. Completely unacceptable. We have crossed the Rubicon to a very dark and dangerous place in this country. Yes. In a second. Castle Doctrine. Oh, I'm sure they're messing with my YouTube video. I'm sure they are. I'm sure they are. They don't like they don't like me or us talking like this. They don't like it. Yeah, you can lay them down. That's you're right. But if they turn around and you lay them down from the back, you're going to jail. But the 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 lack of self awareness and history is strong with these people. The people defending this in the replies also think when the cops come to their house someday, they'll just want to talk first. Oh, by the way, we have to add this little caveat too: they ain't had no warrant, not even a no knock. Hmm. Mm. Bad shoot. So all y'all want to say this was a bad shoot, but Tatiana, uh, Tatiana Jefferson, she deserved it because I didn't see y'all outside defending it. Breonna Taylor deserved it. I didn't see y'all defending that. All right. The brother who was sitting on his porch 
watching cops arrest somebody. Y'all hemmed him up, but y'all didn't defend that. Y'all say he should have minded his own business. Okay. Okay. No, I'm I know she let him in. I'm just saying. They I'm I'm saying for the fact that they don't care if they have a warrant or not. They just gonna run up in your place. So there is that. All right. I'm gonna stop being around the bush. I'm gonna stop being around the bush. We get we gotta get to Dexter Reed. Son of a bitch. I really don't. I'm getting pissed off already. I'm getting pissed off already. <sighs> but for those who need to understand where we're going, this is I mean, way over the edge. Like we, we, we it's not even this, over the edge. We, we died already. This is beyond you know? the event horizon. Like we, we, we about to hit the vortex. Yeah, we about to hit the vortex. <laughs> yeah, yeah. As you can see, I'm on the Chicago Office of Police Accountability website. Now, they said that they released this body cam footage on Monday. What you're seeing is all the files from various body cams and various testimonies of people on scene. Now, as you can see, these are all the videos and shot spotter audio. This was a I don't know. I don't know. I love y'all too much to show this, but I I got to I don't know how. <clears throat> I don't know how. I guess we'll start here. Oh, come on. This fucking mouse. Okay. We'll start here. CBS News. Dexter Reed's family demands charges against CPD officers at fatal shooting. <sighs> family of a man who was shot and deleted by Chicago police in Humboldt Park last month, raised questions Tuesday about the traffic stop that led to the deadly shootout, as well as why officers fired, fired nearly 100 rounds, calling for criminal charges to be fired. 100. 100. Damn near. In the evening, the family later joined activists who denounced the actions of the officers involved and chanted in favor of defunding police. Um, let's not switch the message. This is about your kin, not about defunding the police. Family doesn't want this to happen to anyone else. Attorney Andrew Stroth said as he stood with the family of 26-year-old Dexter Reed on Tuesday outside the Civilian Office of Police Accountability during the midday hours. After the police, the city's police oversight agency released video footage from the shooting. Reed's family is demanding criminal charges against the officers and is calling on the Chicago police department disband tactical units like the one involved in the traffic stop and shooting copa chief administrator andrew kirsten said tuesday the entire incident remains under investigation but it appears that reed fired first after officers surrounded his vehicle following a traffic stop in humboldt park on march 21st Straff and other members of the reed family's legal team criticized the officer's tactics questioning why five plainclothes tactical officers pulled him over and approached his car with guns drawn for what was originally said to be purportedly not wearing his seatbelt. Um, keep a pin in that. Keep a pin in that. 
keep a pin in that. <sighs> Fellow civil rights attorney Stephen Hart, who was also representing the Reed family, said the video released by COPA leaves many, many questions. Why were tactical officers jumping out of an unmarked police car with their guns drawn for a simple traffic violation of not wearing your seatbelt? He said he got guns in his face for not wearing a seatbelt. To us, to the family, that sounds disproportionate. It sounds pretextual. There is a problem with policing in this city where five tactical officers jump out of an unmarked police car brandishing their weapons for a young man that wasn't wearing his seatbelt. Reed's family has described him as a young man who loved playing basketball and enjoyed healthy eating and cooking for his family. He also said he aspired to become a sports broadcaster after helping lead the Westinghouse College Prep High School team to a regional championship in 2016 before playing for the Morton College team in Cicero. Regardless of the person that, that, that they tried to portray Dexter, Dexter as, he was not one of those, said his sister, Portia Banks. Police records show Reed was arrested twice last year. In June, he was arrested on a misdemeanor theft charges, accused of stealing a $950 designer shirt from a Saks Fifth Avenue store on the Magnificent Mile. In July, he was arrested on weapons charges after police and prosecutors say he bought he brought a loaded gun to the Windy City Smokeout Festival despite not having a valid FOID card or concealed carry license. Person said on the day of the shootout with police, Reed had been driving west in the 3800 block of West Ferdinand Street with five plainclothes officers assigned to a tactical unit. Driving an unmarked squad car stopped Reed for what they claimed was not was his not wearing his seatbelt. After officers surrounded his car and began to question him, Reed initially complied with their orders to roll down his window before starting to roll it back up. As officers shouted at him to unlock his door, his shots rang out and an officer standing on the passenger side of Reed's SUV and immediately fell to the ground. Several officers could then be seen running for cover and firing shots at Reed's SUV before he got out and walked to the back of the vehicle as officers continued to shoot him and he fell to the ground. Several officers could then be seen running for cover and firing shots at Reed's SUV before he got out and walked to the back of the vehicle as officers continued to shoot him and he fell to the ground. Several officers can... Oh, I read that. I didn't want to read it again. Early Tuesday evening, CBS2 obtained a letter issued by Kirsten to Police Superintendent Larry Snelling, in which he wrote that, quote, the available evidence calls into question the veracity of the claim that a seatbelt violation was the initial reason for pulling over Reed. This was contrary to what COPA announced in a news release earlier in the day. Specifically, COPA is uncertain how the officers could have seen this seatbelt violation given their location relative to the vehicle and the dark tints on vehicle windows. Let me read that again. Specifically, COPA is uncertain how the officers could have seen the seatbelt violation given their location relative to the vehicle and the dark tints on vehicle windows. Kirsten wrote in the letter April 1st, this evidence raises serious concerns about the validity of the traffic stop that led to the officer's encounter with Reed. The letter questioned the officer's assessment of what is a necessary, reasonable, and proportionate use of deadly force. Kirsten said, Kirsten said officers fired approximately 96 shots in total, but did not say how many shots Reed fired. Body cam footage shows one officer fired at least three shots after Reed fell to the ground, but was still moving. Stroth described those final shots as an officer military style executing Dexter while he laid by his vehicle unarmed and helpless. Did y'all get that? He was unarmed. It's funny how these cases are starting to sound the same. This is Jalen Walker all over again. He ain't had no gun. Remember this, family. I reported on it. 
he had no gun. The gun was in the car. That's the definition of unarmed. Reed's uncle Roosevelt Banks said, that is nothing but plain murder to me. While the Reed family, while the Reed family's attorney did not directly address Copa's assertion that it appears Reed fired first, they suggested he feared for his life when five plainclothes officers surrounded his vehicle pointing weapons. They also said the officers never announced themselves as police during the incident. Imagine a 26 year old not having known what he did wrong and having five guns pointing at him. Do you believe he was frightened? Do you think his security and health and safety was threatened? So oftentimes we hear in unjustified shootings that officers felt they were at risk and that, that there was danger because someone was pointing a gun at them. Yet when they create the same set of circumstances, they fire away 96 times in 41 seconds. Art said it doesn't seem right to, to this family it should not be comfortable to the citizens of Chicago. Reed's uncle Roosevelt Banks said if he had been in Reed's shoes, he would have feared for his life seeing five plainclothes officers wearing hoodies surround his car with guns drawn. If I was in that situation, I would be terrified. I wouldn't know how to specifically react other than to protect myself if that was the case, he said. Reed's mother, Nicole Banks, broke down into tears that collapsed into the arms of her family as she recalled the last time she saw her son alive. I just missed my son. I'm hurt. I'm sick. I feel like I've been shot. My insides is burning up. Why did they do that to my son? Why... Why they did that to my son. They didn't have to do him like that, she said. He had just bought his new car three days before that. And he was just riding around in his car. He said, Mom, I'm going for a ride. Sheila Betty, a law professor at Northwestern, a civil rights attorney who was also on the Reed's family legal team, said the shooting is an example of continued systemic deficiencies at the Chicago Police Department, which has completed only a fraction of court order reforms under a 2017 consent decree. Betty said... Officers should have been using de-escalation tactics, but claim they instead caused tensions to rise as they questioned Reed. Every single thing every single police officer did in this police encounter escalated over and over, from coming out of the car with their guns drawn to screaming commands to brandishing their weapons inside the vehicle, escalating over and over and over again, she said. Betty also claimed officers did not render first aid to Reed as required after shooting him. Son of a bitch. I can't read no more. I I can't read no more. I know y'all don't. I, I'll let y'all decide. Do y'all want to see the videos? If you do, I'll play it. I'll fucking risk the age wall. I don't give a damn. But if you don't, I'll just give y'all the link and then I'll drop the stream yard link and y'all can talk. Mike Wilson. Okay, so I see a couple people. Okay, I see a whole bunch of y'all saying no. All right, so what I'll do is uh, I'll just leave the link in there. 
y'all can go look at it if you want because i saw like the first four and nah it i, I can't and he wasn't the only one there there were four other people This is the case incident report. These are all the people that were with him. Now you see how in the news story they said they didn't give him aid right they said that they did well this is for one of the guys here's Dexter Reed see how they lied and said they gave him first aid so either they lied or the news lied By the way, that same office said initial ballistics report said it doesn't look like Reed fired his gun. Hmm. And this is all the stuff in the report. You can find that in that link I sent. <sighs> you motherfuckers. <laughs> Whoo. All right, let me go to this story. Where the hell is it? Let me, let me, where, where is it? Um, that's the, that's the, that's about There was this one. So that's Dexter Reed right there in the green in the white. I'll put this one in there too. Y'all can read this as well. Now what we'll do is that's the stream yard link if y'all want to say something. <sighs> never ends. It never ends. never ends hmm and of course the usual suspects out there. They just don't. Um, they don't give a fuck. They got empathy when it ain't black person. But when it's a black person. Oh yeah. He was, he, he was wrong. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Must be nice. Must be nice. Know what? 
I don't even want, I don't even want to talk to nobody. I'm not even going to show you all those comments that I saw. This is reality. I just want you people, not y'all in the chat. I want y'all to under. You scumbags that love to defend these cops. Just understand they're going to turn on you. You wanted to ignore Tony Tempa? Fine. That's your prerogative. Because we watched all a year before defend them cops with Micah Johnson. And you understand that. Okay, fine. Y'all ignored what happened in Australia during the scandemic. Y'all ignored that. Them cops were locking people in their homes. But y'all wholly ignored that. We were telling you shit like this could happen over here. And you better wake up. January 6th was, was supposed to be y'all's alarm going off. Y'all were running around saying, oh, they were taking away our democracy. They were, they, they were trying to, Trump won. Whatever the y'all were saying. Again, we so woke, y'all didn't want to listen to us. I was on here telling you, they could federalize the Capitol Police and push them state, put them into the states. In the local municipalities, they still have the power to do that. Y'all didn't want to listen to that. Okay, fine. Y'all wanted Michael Byrd locked up for stopping a threat. That was out of line. But what y'all see going on every day, that's okay. Especially if they have melanin. That's all right. You embolden them every time you say that. Now it's a problem when they run up in your house. Now it's a problem. They don't do nothing. That's what y'all tell us. They don't do nothing. They're trying to protect people. They ain't for you. They hate you just like they hate us. The only difference is we got the balls to stand up in their face and tell them do something. But y'all don't see that. Y'all see Ben Crump and think that's our representation. He's not. Sorry to break it to you. He do what he do. He don't do it for the betterment of us. Black grassroots Ben told y'all, y'all need to watch them cops. Y'all didn't want to listen, okay? Now, when they do this in more secession, 
I don't want to hear nothing. You know what we're going to tell y'all to do? Comply. By the way, if you don't believe me, you can go on X. There's plenty of videos of cops knocking out white people, and I don't hear them out there saying, oh, this is wrong. Or if you do say that, then they're, then they're like, oh, that was excessive. Oh, so getting punched in the face by a cop is excessive, but 100 bullets is not excessive. Ah, got it. Got it. The children of hypocrisy. That 12-year-old kid in Philly got killed. They damn sure made sure that that, that melanated cop, that dark-skinned cop, he was off the force very quickly. Very quickly. <sighs> okay. I don't know what it's going to take. Frankly, I don't give a damn. What we're going to do is keep highlighting it. Y'all want to make fun of it and make money off of it? That's cool. We're going to teach over here. We're going to protect our people. Because I'm telling you, the day they get tired of us, they're going to sick themselves right onto you. They're going to zero in on you. And we just going to fold our arms and we're going to say, now what you going to do? Hopefully you learned something. If you did, i done my job. If not, I'll try to be better next time. I ain't got nothing else to say. Enjoy the rest of your day.